Today in the show, I'm going to be talking about the history of Pennywise the Clown, and I'm going to be talking about some of my thoughts and just do like a light review on this year's release of It. If you didn't know that Pennywise actually doesn't have a long-term physical form, then this show is for you. So before we get into Pennywise, there's something you need to understand about Stephen King's universe. A lot of his books are interconnected. Now he does have some stories that are just standalone stories, but most of them you can read without having read any of his other stuff. But he has written over 300 books and a good amount of them are connected, and you can always bring them right back to a series called The Dark Tower. There are a lot of concepts from The Dark Tower that made their way into it. But basically The Dark Tower itself, as in The Dark Tower, is a black tower that's set in a field of roses and it is the nexus of all realities. So how does this fit into Pennywise the Clown? So Pennywise, otherwise known as It, is actually from something called the Todash Darkness, which is a concept that first appeared in the Dark Tower series. It can also be called the Macroverse, and basically it is a void that surrounds our entire universe. And they're all like these monsters coming out from this void. I think the monsters in Mist were actually the monsters that got out from this void. It does not have a physical form in the Todash Darkness. It is these eternal decaying lights that are also like hairy. They're just beyond human comprehension. Like you couldn't begin to describe them. And if you look at them for too long, you are driven to insanity. And that is how it paralyzes its prey. It gets you to look at its deadlights, you're paralyzed, put into a state of catatonia, and then it can easily eat you. There are two other beings in the Todash Darkness that we know that are either on par with it or somewhere around its power level. One of them is called the Other, and we honestly don't know much about the Other, but one we do know a lot about is the Turtle. So the Turtle one day had like a stomach ache and it threw up our universe, therefore it is the creator of our universe. The turtle and it are polar opposites from each other in every regard, which is why it's important for you to know about the turtle. While it is a creature of destruction and consumption and likes to feed off of fear because it salts the meat as it puts it, the turtle is more a creature of protection and creation. So like I said before, its true form is these worthing, decaying, orange lights that drive people insane. But it also does have a consciousness, and that's the great thing about the books, is that we actually see things from its perspective, and it believes that it is the most superior being in the universe. So the reason it takes on the form of a clown and eats children is because children are easier to manipulate. It's easier to manipulate their fears, and their fears actually make their meat taste better. It does not need fear to eat the children's meat or eat meat in general, it just makes it taste better. The reason it goes for children is because children tend to be more scared of things like ghosts, clowns, like something that you can put into a physical form, whereas adults tend to fear more complex and arbitrary things like bills. Can't really do much of that. So how did it get to Earth in the first place? Well, that's kind of vague. All we know is that a cataclysmic event happened and it came along for the ride. It would stay underground and then as people made dairy, it would awaken and that's when it began to feed. The way to awaken it is by creating either a brutal killing or a suicide, then it will wake up and begin to feed. And this typically happens once every 27 years. The first time this happened was from 1715 to 1716, and it has never been active for more than three consecutive years. The only way to get it to go back to sleep is to have an even bigger or an equal murder-suicide happen. Because of this, the longest cycles are from 1740 to 1743 and from 1876 to 1879. But in 1957, someone called Dorsey Kokoran was beaten to death by their stepfather. Following this, it would awaken and its first target would be a boy called Georgie. So if you've only seen the very recent movie and you've never read the books, you might be a little bit confused by now. Well, the movie that just came out was set in the 80s. The books and and the original movie was actually set in the 50s. So basically all you have to do is take all those events you saw in the movie and stick them in the 50s and the plot is essentially the same although the book does have some extra details. Also unlike the most recent movie and the series from the 90s, in the book 
the children actually use a form of chaos magic and the turtle gets involved with fighting it. So if you don't know the story of it, long story short, a boy named Bill's brother, Georgie, ends up getting consumed by this creature. Over the course of the next few months, a bunch of kids from the town of Derry individually have interactions with this creature and it took the form of their biggest fears. Now in the original movie and in the book, these were like Frankenstein's monsters, werewolves, mummies, that type of thing. It was different in the most recent movie, like one of them faced this weird painting lady. And that I actually found really scary, like I jumped when I saw that. These kids all come together and end up forming a group called the Losers Club because they're all like, losers, like they're bullied, they all have really terrible home lives, so it makes sense for them to be the losers club. They would end up going into the sewers to engage it, and this is where two things happen, and one's sort of like a big thing and one's a slightly more minor thing, but both of them are very important. Number one, Bill would end up doing a ritual to fight it. Bill would end up doing something called the Ritual of Chud, which is essentially a battle of will, and his soul would leave him go to the macroverse, this is where he meets the turtle, the turtle tells him that he has to do this ritual to beat it, it's like the only way to defeat it, and he would end up fighting it in a battle of will, and he overpowers it. The children are like, okay, is it dead, is it not dead, they're pretty sure it's dead, but they're like, should it ever return, you know, we're all gonna come back together and defeat it. Not before there was a teenage orgy scene, not gonna get too deep into that, but yeah, Beverly ends up like giving up her virginity to all these boys because the sewers are collapsing, they don't have their way out. I wasn't expecting to see that in the movie, and low-key I'm happy it wasn't in the movie. It did not die. The next time it would emerge, it would be 1984 and all of the Losers Club have grown up, they've gone their separate ways, and they're all very successful in their own lives now. The only member of the Losers Club that has remained in Derry is a guy called Mike, he was the black kid in the group. Being an adult, Bill, when he did the ritual again, wasn't strong enough to defeat it on his own. So it'll be up to all the remaining members of the Losers Club, like, one of them had died, and in this ritual, another one of them dies. But thanks to all of their combined efforts and the power of friendship, which is something we associate with childhood, so it kind of makes sense that the power of friendship would be able to defeat it. But anyway, the power of friendship helps them defeat it. But it does suck that their main unifier ended up having to be the death of Eddie, their friend who died in this battle. So here's the thing I want to get into here. Stephen King's one of my favourite authors because he clearly knows his occult practices. And here is a huge thing about the ritual of Chud and the use of the silver. The ways that both of these were done is very, very similar to chaos magic. If you don't know what chaos magic is, chaos magic is like an entry level of magic, it's sort of like one that's very accessible, it's even mass marketed at the moment, it's called The Secret, it's all about visualisation and bringing your visualisation into reality. Sigils, symbols and focus points are common tools used by practitioners of chaos magic, and that's why the ritual would work. It was these children's symbol of power to work against it, because it was a being of Todash space, a being of pure chaos, it makes sense that chaos would be effective against it. With this being said, I do think that the main story behind it is less to do with chaos magic and is more about embracing joy and childhood ideals and choosing those over negativity in your life. Chaos is neither good or bad, chaos can be anything you want it to be, and when you embrace it, you can utilise it as a really effective tool in your life. Chaos can be one of the greatest driving forces of positivity that you have ever felt, and that's kind of why I like the concept of Pennywise, and especially the concept behind his defeat. So, with this being said, what's my point of view on 2017's It? I liked it a lot. I really had a good time with this movie. I went in sort of being like, oh, I don't really know what to expect. My feeling is telling me it's going to be really good, but it could also be really bad because horror has been kind of goofy for the past few years. But no, it was so good. In fact, I think it was better than the 1990s miniseries. And yeah, people are going to compare them. You should be able to enjoy them individually, but I do think it was better than the 1990s miniseries. Still enjoy that version, but this was just so good. So this movie is actually set in 1988 through to 1989, but it depicts the events of the 1957 cycle. So we can actually expect the second part of the story to be set in 2016 through to 2019. 
2017, which I am really excited to see. As a person that really loves horror, and I was first shown It when I was like two or three years old. My aunt has a thing for showing children horror movies, and she showed me It and she was amazed by the fact that I laughed at it when I was a kid. Like, I wasn't scared. I really just loved this movie. It was this and Beetlejuice. Those were my two big movies as a child. I will say the overall tonality of this movie did capture the book for me. There are some things that I'm a bit iffy on, and I'll touch on those in a second, but the overall tonality, it was dark, it was grimy. That was just a shitty place to be in, and I really liked that. And it also just had, like, these moments of quirkiness like you'd be sort of sat there feeling a bit uncomfortable because you're supposed to feel like that and then just something well and truly quirky would happen something that looks like it's jumped out of a Tim Burton movie and you go oh okay and I liked that a lot it worked with the premise of killer clown because they really didn't get into the deadlights like it was referenced a few times but they didn't go in on it. In comparison to the 1990s version, which was like a three hour romp through Quirkville, this one was a lot more subtle in its quirkiness and I really did appreciate that a lot. I think it worked a lot for it. However, when it came to things I didn't like, we do actually have to talk about the setting itself. Derry and what these kids go through. So in the book, Derry is just like this fucked up place. No one should want to ever be there. The town itself is fucked up and the adults that live there are equally fucked up and they treat their kids really badly. Like you've got Bill whose parents, they don't say it, but they kind of blame Bill for Georgie's death and like they sort of treat him badly and they all sort of live in this house that's haunted by the memories of their dead child. And then you've got Eddie whose mother convinces him that he's sick all the time. And like, she's always like trying to tell him that he's sick because she needs this extra attention of having a sick child. And then you've got like Stan and Mike, a Jew and a black guy growing up in America in the 1950s. And that's just not a good time because that's back like when America was great. So that darker side of a place and that darker side of humanity is completely missing from Derry. Like in the book, we see characters deal with racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, you name it. These characters deal with it. But because they took away that aspect of discrimination, they also did like a switch around in the Losers Club. So in the book, Mike is like the historian. He's the smart guy. And then in this movie, that's Ben. Ben's like the smart guy. He's the fat kid, the smart guy. And the reason I'm not too happy with this is because it sort of brings us to question what does Mike bring to the Losers Club in this movie? All of them bring something to the club, even if it's just like as vague as, oh, his comedy, he's sort of funny sometimes. But Mike's character didn't really bring anything. And that's not the fault of the actor. It's entirely the fault of the script. He didn't bring anything other than like a bolt gun. I'm pretty sure like any of them could have got a hold of a bolt gun. I don't understand why they did that switch around. Like, I didn't mind it, but I don't understand what there was to be gained from it. So let's finish this on a high note, Pennywise. This is the best Pennywise I've ever seen. The costume is great, the makeup is great. The only thing I wish is there was more like practical effects done around his mouth, but like what I did see was forgivable. There's always chapter two. We could see more practical effects in chapter two. They might get even darker. So I am so excited. I honestly really enjoyed this. I think if you're old enough to go and see this, you should definitely go and see it. And if you're not old enough to go and see the movie, read the book, buy it online. I think it's like three pounds. So it could only be like $6 in America maximum. Like seriously, read it. It's a classic for a reason. Such a good book. It's long, it's like a thousand pages, but definitely read it. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. So have you ever read or seen it? Did you see the most recent movie? Did you see the one back in the day? Please let me in the comments down below. Also don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, do all of my social links, and I will see you next time.